With goals, there's normally two ways that you can look at them. There's the one philosophy that says, well, if you put your goals really, really high, right? You, you say, I want to get 100% in everything. Naturally, you're not going to. But even if you don't hit 100%, you might hit 90%. And that's still going to improve your average overall. On the other side of the philosophy, there are people who say, listen, man, aim your goals so stupendously low that you will hit them, you will boost your self-esteem, and the next time, do it a little bit higher and a little bit higher. Uh, a psychologist is much more likely, you know, if you're afraid of spiders, he's not going to throw a spider at you, right? He's going to slowly increase the, the intensity of it. He's going to show you a picture of a spider. Then he's going to make you think about a spider. Then he might put a movie on about a spider. Then he might bring a spider into the corner of the room. So he's slowly bringing it up because it's not from going to one to 10, but it's going from one to two, from two to four, from two, four to six, from six to six and a half. So it's gradually bringing it up. And I was curious, you know, what is your go-to when it comes to goals? Is your philosophy like, well, I'll aim really, really high. And even though I might not achieve it, even though it might be unreachable, you know, maybe I'll just get below it. Or I'll aim so ridiculously low, I'm bound to get it and I'm bound to move forward. Now, me personally, I'm a big fan of both. Both, and I think context is so, so, so important. And the reason I say that is because I remember back in high school, there was a point where I think it was grade, I want to say 11, grade 11, I'm around 17 years old, and I remember vividly going to social studies class for whatever reason, and in my head I was like, okay, I can at least get a 75% in this class. And for whatever reason, I just caught myself, and went, wait a minute, 75? Wait, why am I thinking about my minimum grade? Why don't I think about what I could achieve? Why, why can't I think about, why can't I get 100%? Am I dumber than everyone in here? No. Am I lazier than everyone in here? No. And now listen, and then I brought practicality to it. I said, listen, even if I'm not the most smartest guy, that is okay. But I can be the most hardworking. I can't, I, if, if I'm not the most talented, that's okay. But I can be the hardest working guy. I can show up to practice one hour early. You, you don't need, that's not genetics. Being reliable is not genetics. Putting in hard work, that's not a genetic thing. Being responsible is not something that takes skill. So what happens was I was like, you know what? Why can't I get 100% in all my classes? In every class I'm taking this semester and next semester, you know, the four classes or five classes a semester combined, why can I not get 100% A plus in all of them? Now, mind you, I was a person who, I, I didn't have horrible grades, but they, they weren't amazing either. We're talking uh, 60%, 70%, like my high would be like an 80%. Like, whoa, like the annual, unless it was acting, then it was 98, 99. <laughs> That's a different story. Anyway, so I was like, okay, I want to get 100%. And I was like, I can do it. And I really sincerely believed that I could. You know, I said, you know, I'm not the smartest guy, but I can outwork people. I will work harder than them. And, and I was thriving on that. And basically, the end of the semester hits. And how many of my classes do you think I got 100%? Granted, mind you, my average is around 68 to maybe 72, 73. Zero. So my immediate thought was, damn, I didn't get 100%. But I realized that I had increased my average of about 70% to 90%. So even though I hadn't gotten 100%, when well, I looked over my classes, 89%, 95%, 94%, 90%. Where the worst grade, I'd get an 86% and I'd say, oh man, like I really dropped the ball on that one, like 86, you know, that sucks. Not realizing that it's like, yeah, 86 compared to 100 sucks, but 86 compared to 70, that's now a 16% increase. So I feel as if, you know, whenever you're thinking about goals and, and kind of where to put them, right, and how to move forward, it's really important that you, that you realize, you know, where have you come from? And even though you didn't hit that 100%, you know, you're right. It's not that pure joy because you didn't accomplish the goal, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe there's a worry, you know, with this philosophy that if you did accomplish the goal, if you did satisfy yourself, you take your foot off the pedal. Right now in life, I am extremely happy. I am extremely happy, 10 out of 10, but I'm not satisfied because if I was satisfied, I wouldn't work any harder. If I was satisfied with my body, I wouldn't exercise it more. I'm happy with my body, but I'm not satisfied. Right. And with this sort of a mentality, you want to go out there, right? You want to do more and it keeps you hungry. And even though you don't achieve that, it, you know, when you take a step back and look at the bigger picture, you are moving forward. Now, again, the other side of the philosophy is, hey, listen, put your goals so stupidly low that you have to get them. You've never worked out before in your life. Tell yourself, okay, I got to do five push-ups every day. Five. You know, if even that's even three. Three push-ups every day. Is that a crazy goal? How, you know, if anyone who knows push-ups, man, it might take you four seconds, three seconds to do three push-ups, a second of, like that's, that's super easy. You can nail that and after a week, say, okay, now I'm gonna do seven push-ups a day. 
after another week, I'm now going to do 10 push-ups a day. And now you can incrementally bring it up. And what's this, what's going to happen is naturally when you accomplish a goal, when you say, I am going to do that, and then you proceed to do that, now you have a boost in your self-esteem. Now there's some, uh, this neuroassociation, association, these, these parts of your brain that form together and go, you know what, he said this and this happened. It came true. So now if he's saying he's going to do 20 push-ups today, there's a chance it's going to happen. And, and your body wants to make it happen. Your brain, your mind is going to come together to make sure that you accomplish that goal. Why? Because it looks back at those other cases and it sees, okay, these all happen. Chances are this one can probably happen. And then you go for it. So both are really good, my friends. I think, you know, it just, it comes down to, you know, what do you prefer? And, you know, why not switch? Why not do one and then do another and kind of just go back and forth, depending on your own tempo, depending on, you know, whatever uh, floats your goat, as my old comparative civilizations teacher used to say. Whatever floats your goat. <laughs>